So linear programming is one of my favorite sections. So what it's going to show us how to do is how to maximize or minimize a function based on some given constraints. So let's imagine you're a farmer or a forester or a store owner. Um, you might have right, certain limitations on your resources. You have a finite amount of money or time or acres to plant. And right, different, right, different constraints are placed on those. How you allocate your resources affects the income, maybe, if that's what you want to maximize. So what linear programming does is it allows us to figure out the best way to allocate the resources that we have. So here's how it works. So we're going to have two or more constraints, and these are going to be in the form of an inequality. We're going to graph these inequalities. We're going to graph that system of inequalities, and we're going to find the region they all share. So this region that all of the inequalities share is called the feasibility, feasibility region. Okay. So we have to find the feasibility region based on the constraints. Now we're also going to have an objective function. That's the function we want to maximize or minimize. Now there's some algebra that goes into it. We don't need to know what the algebra behind it is, but you should know that the minimum and the maximum of your objective function is always going to be at one of the vertices of that feasibility region. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to graph the feasibility region, we're going to find the vertices, and then we're going to check the objective function at each of the vertices and see which one is the biggest, that's the maximum, and then which one is the smallest, and that'll be the minimum. So let's go ahead and do one right, that doesn't have many words in it at all. So we're going to find the maximum and the minimum for the objective function. So that's this f equals. The objective function has an equals. The constraints have inequalities uh, for the given constraints. Graph the feasibility region and find all vertices. So the vertices are those points. So you might notice that, OK, the, the bottom two constraints are that x is greater than or equal to 0 and y is greater than or equal to 0. Well, I just happen to only use the first quadrant in the picture that I drew. Um, so then we don't have a lot of wasted space on my graph. OK, so we're ignoring the objective function for now, and we're just graphing the feasibility region. I kind of wish I would have given myself a little bit more space. Hmm. I'm looking at those. I think I'm going to renumber my axes just so I have a little bit more space. So I only know need to go up to 6. I think that's my highest one. So I might count by 2s instead. So this will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then I'll do the same thing on the Ys. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. OK. So now I'm going to use the intersect method for my um, for graphing these. So for the top one, my y-intercept is 6. And my x-intercept is 4. OK, I'm going to draw that line. So this is the top constraint. I'll grab a different color so you can kind of see. So that was the top one. The second constraint I'll do in blue. So that the x-intercept is negative 4. Oh, I can't see that one. OK, so I have to graph that one the other way. OK, so let's graph that one by doing, let's see, 2y less than or equal to x plus 4 y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 2. So I would start at 2, and then I have a slope of 1 half. So I'll go up 1 and over 2 and connect those. All right, so I had to be a little bit flexible. Now I have to decide. I have like four, well, OK, I also have this region right here. So I have y is greater than or equal to 0. That's this way. 
x is greater than or equal to 0. So that's this way. But I could have, right, any one of these four regions. So I need to figure out which region I'm interested in. A couple of ways you can do that. And we can try to just rationalize our way through it, which I'm probably going to do. Or we can grab points that we know are in each of the regions and then test it in all of the inequalities, all of the constraints, and make sure it works. Okay, But let's just see if we can reason our way through. So let's take a look at the blue line. So it's right here. y is less than or equal to 1 half x plus 2. So that means I need to be below my blue line. Okay, now let's look at the orange line. I need, and if we solve that one for y, right, so 2y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 12. y is less than or equal to negative 3 halves x plus 6. So I need the y values that are less than that line. So the place where we have both the blue arrows and the orange arrows is right here in that bottom little region. Almost always it's going to be kind of down there by the origin, but it doesn't have to be. So you do want to check. Okay, so I have my feet. This is my feasibility region right there in the orange. So let's find all of those vertices. So I have four corners right to my shape. So zero, zero. Some of them we can just read off, right? So I have 0, 0. I have 4, 0. I have 0, 2. And now I have to do some algebra to find that one at the top. So that's where those two lines intersect. So let's go ahead and solve that system of equations. How are we going to solve that system of equations? Oh, I don't know. Let's go ahead and solve, right? Change the inequalities to equals. Um, 2y minus x equals 4. And then, let's see, I'm going to switch my x and my y here to get my y's lined up. I should have done that when I copied down, but I didn't. That's okay. Negative x plus 2y equals 4. I just changed the order here. Remember that a minus sign, though, stays with the term. So, oh, my y's, they're um, the same. So if I just subtract... So I'm going to change the sign. I'm going to multiply the bottom equation by negative 1. Uh, so what is that? x minus 2y equals negative 4. Top equation will leave the same. Add those two together. 4x, y's go away, equals Eight. So x equals 2. Oh my gosh. 2 comma. Does that look about right? Oh, that does look pretty good. So if x is 2, plug that back in, right, to figure out what your y partner is. So 2 times y minus 2 equals 4. 2y equals 6. So y equals 3, right? And that does also look good from your graph point of view. 2, 3. Perfect. <sighs> There are the vertices. So now we have to go through and plug each of those in to your objective function to see which one makes it biggest and smallest. So your objective function, right, is 2 times x plus 14 times y. Can you see that there? So f of 0, 0 is 2 times 0 plus 14 times 0. Well, that's 0. Okay. We do f of 4, 0. So 2 times x, x is now a 4, plus 14 times y. y is a 0. So that is 8. f of 0, 2. So 2 times 0, plus 14 times 2. 2 times 0 is 0, 14 times 2, uh, 28. And then finally, f of 2, 3. So again, 2 times the x value. The x value is 2 in this case, plus 14 times 3. Oh, I think that's going to be our biggest. Let's see, can I do that? That's 4 
12 plus 42. So that one is 46. Okay, so the maximum value that our objective function can take in that region, right, subject to these constraints, is 46, right? So that's the maximum value. And it happens, right, at 2 when x is 2 and y is 3. And the minimum, so this is our max, and our minimum is 0. Okay. okay, so now let's do an example that has a lot of words. So, right, we're going to have to go through and do some translating. Um, where you want to start is to figure out what the variables are. And usually the easiest place to find that is in the objective function. So you're going to look for the word maximize or minimize and see what it is you want to, um, what you have control over to maximize or minimize. Okay, so here we go. Lumber mill can convert logs into either lumber or plywood. In a given week, the mill can turn out 400 units of production, of which 100 units of lumber and 150 units of plywood are required by regular customers. Oh gosh. The profit on each unit of lumber is $20 and on a unit of plywood is $30. How many units of each type should the mill produce in order to maximize profit? Okay. So the two things that we have control over, right, is how many units of lumber and how many units of plywood. So we're going to let x be lumber and y be plywood. Okay. So what is the objective function, right? That's going to be our profit. So our profit function, right? So each unit of lumber gives us a profit of $20. So it's $20 times x, however many units of lumber we do, and plywood, right, $30 for every unit of plywood we make. Okay, so that's good. So now let's think about those constraints. So again, it can't be um, negative, so we'll go ahead and, and put those up here. x has to be greater than or equal to 0, y is greater than or equal to 0. And now let's go back and let's read carefully, okay? Um, the in a given week, the mill can turn out 400 units of production. That's a constraint, the 400. So that means that's the total of x plus y, right? So the most they can do is produce 400 units. Okay. Um, of which 100 of lumber and 150 of plywood are required. So we have to have at least 100 units of lumber right, because those are already pre-sold. So x is greater than or equal to 100 for our lumber, and y is greater than or equal to 150. I think that's all we've got there. Okay, well, let's, let's see if we can do that. Um, how are we going to scale our graph this time? Um, <laughs> I need to get up to 400. Gosh, I just don't like the way they have these at all. Should we go by? No, I don't want to go by 50s. That would be way too big. Um, I guess we could go by 25s. Is that right? So 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, 75, 200. 250, 300, 350. Oh, shucks, I missed one. That's okay. 400 will go there. Okay, so then 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. 400. Okay, so I'm in quadrant one, x's and y's are positive. Now let's do this next one. x plus y has to be less than or equal to 400. 
Okay, so I'll do that one in orange, and then I'll change my colors here. So here's my 400s. I had to go off my graph a little bit. Okay. And then I need my x's to be greater than or equal to 100. So I go to where x equals 100, right here. Okay, let's draw that line in. And I need to be greater than, so I know that line, I need to be to that way. Oh, and for my orange line, right, I need it to be less than the 400, so that one is down. Okay, so I'm kind of over here in this region now, so far. But let's do our last one. My Y's have to be greater than or equal to 150. So the greater than or equal to 150, so I go to where Y is 150, it's right there. And I'll go across, and then I need to be greater than that. So now I'm up here. So it looks like it's this triangle right there. Now for this one, I think I can just maybe read those values off. I don't know, let's give it a try for our vertices. So down here in the bottom left corner, I have 100, 150. Over here, gosh, oh, I know for sure, right, that was the y equals 150. So, and that's intersecting the, the orange line. So if y is 150, x is 250. Right, 150, and then an x of 250 is this point right here. That's it, right? It looks pretty close. Right, my lines aren't awesome, but in the ballpark. My equation, to go off your equation, right? That's gonna be better than your graph probably. And then, so one, two, I still have this top vert to see to find. So that's on the x equals line and the orange diagonal line. So the x along that line is definitely 100. And then the diagonal line, if x is 100, then y is 300. Okay. So once you have your vertices, then we plug each of those into your objective function to see which one gives us the biggest value. And that's how we should allocate our production to maximize profit. Oh my gosh, here we go. I'm gonna use a calculator for sure. So the first one, so P of, P for profit, 100 comma 150. So 20 times 100 plus 30 times 150. Right? What do we get there? So I have 20 times 100 plus 30 times 150. So 6,500. Uh, where am I going to write that? I think I'll write it just here alongside it. So that's $5,500. Let's do our next one. Profit of 250 comma 150. So 20 times x, so checking out this vertice, x is 250, and 30 times the y, 150. Okay, so 20 times 250 plus 30 times 150. So $9,500, okay, so that's bigger. I'm sorry, 9,500, I think I said that wrong. And finally, check that last point, 100, 300. So again, 20 times 100 plus 30 times 300. 20 times 100 plus 30 times 300, uh, 11,000. Oh, huh. So the way we maximize our profit is to do 100 of lumber and 300 of plywood. So that is right, this point right here is the point where we happen to maximize our profit in this situation. So let's say, um, how many units of each type should be, should the mill produce in order to maximize profit? I guess I should answer the question. Um, it should produce 100 units of lumber and 300 units of plywood.